Hello ladies and gentlemen a very very warm welcome to this particularly amazing and wonderful day that brings together all of the researchers at the platform of applied zoological society of pakistan i am sabarias and ample scholar i have pleasure being the moderator of the session ecology fisheries wildlife biodiversity and nutrition i will start this session with the talk of our first speaker dr muhammad junaid bakhtati from nushehra haji bakhtis wali university turkey he will talk about the evolution of small dams used by animals for drinking water in turkey please muhammad junaid bakhtati sir Hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Associated Professor Dr. Cüneyt Bağdatlı uh, from Turkey. Uh, my university name is Nevşehir Hacı Bektaş Veli uh, Department of Biosystem Engineering. Uh, in this today uh, for this conference uh, my presentation title is Evolution of small dams used by animals for drinking water in Turkey. Uh, the total area of uh, Turkey is uh, 783,577 km square. Uh, Turkey has got uh, 17, uh, 17 million uh, cattle uh, and uh, 48 million, approximately half past 48 a million head of uh, sheep and goats. The daily water requirements of uh, cattle is uh, 50 liter the white day and a sheep or uh, goat is 15 liter a day. Some of the drinking water uh, needs of the uh, animals roaming in the pastures can be met by the small dams built. The total surface area of the dam and lake in Turkey corresponds uh, to uh, one uh, point uh, forty four, and the total area of the country. The small dams of the drinking water for animals are smaller in volume than irrigation proposed dams, and their water storage volume is uh, less than dams. The small dams is uh, capacity of drinking water of animal uh, are uh, determined according to the animal presence in the animal breeding region and are uh, built as a uh, five between 10 uh, volume thousand. Abstract of a study, uh, these small dams are generally built with the soil fill and are e easily built. In total, there are uh, uh, there are about uh, 2,080 drinking water small dams for animal in Turkey. With these small dams, drinking water needs for animal approximately 10 million animal year are met in Turkey. Eastern Anatolia, Anatolia and Southeastern Anatolia are the regions where pasture livestock is mostly performed in Turkey. There are uh, 12 small dams for drinking water used by animals in Erzurum province located in the Eastern uh, Eastern Anatolia region. There are uh, 20 small dams for drinking water used by animals in Diyarbakir province located in the southeastern Anatolia region. Increasing the number of uh, livestock drinking water ponds in uh, Turkey will make an important contribution to the development of grassland animal husbandry. Uh, we, we can uh, see, uh, look at the, in this uh, Turkish map, distribution of the animal cattle of uh, Turkey distribution. Uh, and uh, look at the, uh, when they look at the uh, Turkish map in the uh, east of the Turkey and distribution animal increasing in uh, cattle. 
And uh, look at the, when I the look at the, and uh, Turkish statistical uh, Institute from the Turkish statistical Institute, cattle number and small animal numbers according to year. Uh, 2010 a uh, year uh, cattle number is uh, 11 million, approximately 11 million. Uh, when I uh, coming to, to uh, 19, 2019 years, uh, 17 uh, million, uh, increasing the uh, 60 million increasing uh, cattle number. Uh, when I uh, small animal number, uh, 2010 year, uh, 29 uh, million uh, small animal number. Uh, when uh, when I uh, coming the uh, 20 2019 year 40 80 80 million number small animal small dams used by the animal for drinking water some pastures might not uh, have uh, water in all seasons of the year. Water supply for animals can sometimes be a problem, especially in seasons when their uh, crisis uh, is the intense. In such pastures where the current topographic, geologic and hydrologic conditions are favorable, small dams for animal drinking water supply are often once the problem can be solved. Small dams built for animal drinking water in, in our country are generally landfill ponds. A pond name is um, small dams. They are widely used because the material used is easily provided and does not require much processing in the construction ash. Uh, some samples uh, distribution of small dams used by the animal for drinking water. Look at the uh, east of the Turkey, right side, uh, look at the, in Erzurum province. Uh, now uh, there is uh, there are uh, 12 uh, small dams uh, used by animal for drinking water. Uh, when I uh, coming to the uh, south of the south uh, east of the Turkey, uh, Diyarbakir province, look at the Diyarbakir province. Now uh, there are uh, 22 uh, small dams used by animal for drinking water. Because uh, east of the Turkey, uh, east of Turkey, uh, there are uh, grassland livestock uh, generally in this region area. Uh, the samples, uh, small dams used by animal for drinking water in Erzurum province. In this, uh, uh, this uh, small uh, small dams used by animal for drinking water in uh, Erzurum province. The samples. In our age, the importance of the water is increasing. The, the drought uh, risk in recent years increases uh, the need for water even more. Uncontrolled flow of the snow and rain waters carry fun, fine soil practices with it, causing both water and soil loss. Reaching adequate and clean drinking water is very important for cattle and cattle. Uh, the, uh, this figure and other samples uh, for small dams used by animal for drinking water in Erzurum province. Erzurum province is uh, located uh, is east of the uh, Turkey. A drinking water animal uh, uh, in Erzurum province is small dams and uh, the sources were the animals split on the pasture a uh, can drinking water should be close to the places uh, where the animals are accommodated. It is possible to store the snow rain water in the upper basins and to meet the drinking water of the animals. When needed with the livestock drinking water ponds, pond is a uh, small uh, dams. Uh, each of which can be built on slope lands. Each of uh, uh, which uh, is uh, five and six meter height and has a length of uh, small body. 
Uh, the, another uh, samples, uh, small dams for the small dams uh, used by animal uh, for drinking water in Erzurum province. Um, since uh, these small dams, which are selected especially close to pasture area, are generally built on public lands, uh, there is uh, no need for exploration. The capacity of the animal drinking water dam is determining according to the animal potential of the region and uh, is uh, generally around um, 5 to 10,000 cubic meters. Depending on the nature of the filling materials used uh, in the body, the upstream slope uh, is uh, accepted, accepted as um, one uh, wide uh, 2.5 and the downstream slope is um, uh, half past uh, water is the taken from the earth fill body with the help of the bottom outlet. Since animal uh, drinking water ponds are generally built on small basins of um, one uh, between two kilometer square size, it is beneficial to build and spillway where possible. Result and uh, suggest uh, think uh, livestock drinking water dams store water uh, in arid, uh, uh, arid uh, regions. The stored water is extremely important for meeting the drinking water needs of the animals. In addition, uh, these uh, dams uh, prevent uh, soil erosion. The expansion of the, these small dams should be encouraged, especially in the regions where pasture animal husbandry is coming. Uh, for listening to me, thank you very much. Uh, look at the uh, references uh, for this uh, study. Thank you very much for your attending. Thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad Zineed Baghdadli for delivering such informative talk to our audience. Now I would like to call Muhammad Kabir from University of Sargoda for delivering his research work on green revolution, a possible solution to air pollution in changing climate of the world. Please, Muhammad Kabir, U.S. My name is Dr. Mohan Kabir and I am working as an assistant professor and in charge at the Department of Biological Sciences, University of Sargodha, Subcampus Bakhar, Punjab, Pakistan. First of all, I pay my thanks to the organizing committee of the Third International Conference on Applied Zoology 2020 and Kajazam University, Islamabad, Pakistan, who give me a chance to present in this ICAZ 2020. Today, the topic of my presentation is Green Revolution, a possible solution to air pollution in changing climate of world. As we know that environment is consistent on the three major components that is air, water and soil and all these components of the environments are deteriorating due to toxic effects of the pollutants which are mainly produced due to the anthropogenic activities or man-made activities. As we know that research starts with the problem and ends with the solution, so the problem in my presentation is the pollution and its solution is the plantation. The presentation layout is importance of trees, pollution and pollutant types and issue, environmental calendar, plantation campaign and solution, conclusion and recommendation. Muscosol says a tree that lives for 50 years generates a US dollar worth of oxygen, recycle a huge quantity of US dollar worth of soil fertility, facilitate a huge quantity of US dollar worth of the soil emission control, creates a US dollar worth of the air pollution control and provides US dollar worth of the shelter for insect, birds and animal. Besides, it provides flower, fruit and seeds. Our net loss is worth more than 57,381 US dollars when one tree falls or affected by environmental pollution. Therefore, a humble request is that think before you cut a tree. As we know that problem of the environmental pollution is on large scale in the developing country and in the big city. So flyer says, if you are lost, look for smoke, where there is smoke, there is a city. What is the pollution, pollutant, it types and what is the issue? 
एंड अनडिजायरेबल चेंज इन फिजिकल केमिकल एंड बायोलॉजिकल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ एयर वाटर एंड सॉइल दैट में हार्मफुल इफेक्ट्स द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म इज नोन एज द पोल्यूशन एंड व्हाट आर द पोल्यूटेंट वेरी सिंपली द सब्सटेंसेस व्हिच कॉज द पोल्यूशन आर नोन एज द पोल्यूटेंट बट इन अ मोर प्रिसाइज वे रेसिड्यू ऑफ थिंग्स वी मेक यूज एंड थ्रो अवे आर नोन एज द पोल्यूटेंट सो देयर आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द पोल्यूशन and polluted and as we know that all component of the environment are polluted so pollution types includes the air pollution water pollution land pollution thermal pollution noise pollution and chemical pollution what is the issue we use the resources extensively and then are not responsible for the consequences that is the big issue for the environment as we know that environment also has a calendar and there are different days which we should celebrate on annually basis if we are environmentally friend but we are not doing so due to which the problem of the environmental pollution is increasing day by day and that is a greatest risk for the existence of life on the surface of the earth so coming towards the environmental calendar the world environmental day is celebrated on the 5th june all over the world here i want to mention some some important days of the environmental calendar world habitat day on the 3rd of october international day for natural disaster on 13th of october world day for water on the 22nd of march and the world international plantation day on the 18th of august we celebrate only one day annually that is the birthday and we celebrate this day very warmly but we are not familiar with the days of the environmental calendar here in this slide you can see that different types of the polluted are dumped from the industries outside their wall and by burning process of these waste material the pollutants are discharged into the in air due to which the air is becoming more and more polluted and there will be a great risk for the existence of life on the surface of earth due to the polluted environment but we are not taking it serious and we are just passing our life by as a, a luxury life we should focus to the environment if we want to keep our next coming generation more healthy and more suitable for the environment so, so the solution for pollution is the plantation as i already mentioned that plantation should be on the large scale plants act as the natural lungs as plants take up the carbon dioxide from the environment and release the oxygen and this oxygen is necessary for our respiratory activity even not for the human but for all the living organisms so plant a tree and get oxygen for free plants are nature purifier of the environment it is our duty to save the environment's beauty let us go green to get our globe clean so green revolution is the best solution to arrest the pollution in this slide you can see that different plantations activities are being carried on in our sub campus our entrance gate are also made by different types of the plant our faculty member our student even our birthday director is also show keep interest in plantations activity within our campus but the such type of activity should be carried out on a large scale within our city within our country and globally we should think about it what is conclusion if hazard population growth and constructions of the new industrial structure goes on without realizing the importance of trees then probably there would be more environmental changes in near future these environmental changes are harmfully affecting to the living organism the condition is that be a part of the solution not pollution i have only one request that each one must plant one and join the green revolution stop the pollution thank you for your attention now the session is open for the question Thank you so much Muhammad Kabir for such an amazing talk. Now I would like to call Mavish David from Kaidiyazm University Islamabad. She will talk about the evolution of environmental effects of heavy metals of on biochemical profile and oxidative stress among children at brick kiln sites. Please Mavish David Assalamu alaikum and greetings everyone I am Ms Mehvish David a PhD scholar 
from reproductive physiology laboratory kaide azam university um, and the topic of my research article is evaluation of environmental effects of heavy metals on biochemical profile and antioxidant stress among children living at brickin sites starting with the introduction of my topic uh, we know that pakistan is the third largest brick producing country after china and india because it produces around 45 billion bricks per year and uh, on the global scale pakistan produces 3% of the bricks that are produced um Uh, if we look at the stats uh, we see that around 40000 brick uh, sorry 20000 brickins are present uh, throughout pakistan of which more than 10000 brickins are present only in punjab province uh, brickins emit a large amount of pollutants into the environment uh, that uh, affect uh, basically uh, negatively uh to uh, not only on the environment but also the other living forms including the plants animals as well as the local residents or you can say the occupational uh, people that are working at the brick in sites uh heavy metals are uh, also the major portion of the industrial wastes of brick in the major heavy metals which are uh, includes the chromium cadmium nickel and zinc and they impart adverse actions not only on the humans but also on the environment so uh, studies have suggested that children which are living at the brick in sites they are at increased risk to the exposure of environmental pollutants because it may affect their growth and their uh, certain uh, Uh, normal functions or you can say the normal physiology so um, the, the statistical analysis has shown that the total number of girl labor in a uh, province of punjab is around 57679 whereas the number of boys um, children that are working at as a labor <coughs> is a uh, 69100 as we know that the heavy metal may affect the children growth by affecting their hypothalamic pituitary and somatotropic axis therefore the present study plans to evaluate the uh, hazardous effects of heavy metals that are emitted from the brickins on the child health uh, by considering their blood profile antioxidant enzyme status of the body induced dna damage somatotropic and stress hormone concentrations moving uh, towards the materials and method uh, this slide shows the area in which the sampling uh, was conducted and uh, the area that was uh, taken its imagery has been shown it is rawat which is present in the district rawalpindi and um, around it, it it is included in the potohar region uh, around 108 brickins were present here and only uh, 25 brickins honors participate uh, agreed to participate in the present study um among the participants brick in children that were aged between 4 to 17 were selected uh, and a total number of uh, samples uh, for the present study included were 232 and they were divided into two groups the control group and the exposed group the exposed group included the children that were living at the brick in sites whereas the control group included the children that were living in the same district but they were living far away from the brick in sites so um, basically the socio demographic data was collected uh, by um, Uh, using the questionnaires which included mixed type of questionnaires regarding their uh, personal uh, health their uh, family health and their uh, the end uh, about their uh, uh, work history in that specific area so after um, Uh, collecting the socio demographic data or after filling of the questionnaires blood samples were collected with the consent of uh, either their parents or the children itself and uh, the plasma was um, isolated and was collected after centrifugation and later it was stored at minus 80 degree c until further analysis were made so the major parameters that were studied in the present study include uh, the age difference that was measured among the two groups body mass index was measured atomic uh, mass spectrometry was carried out for the uh, 
qualitative analysis of the heavy metal uh, burden in the blood. Um, hematological parameters uh, were studied as well as the comet assay was conducted to see the DNA damage uh, you, in the blood. Uh, further, oxidative stress profile was measured uh, by measuring the levels of catalase, peroxidases, and sodium dimutases, as well as the uh, levels of oxidants, that is, um, thiobarbituric acid reactive species and reacti uh, reactive oxygen species levels were measured. ELISA was uh, conducted for a cortisol hormone and growth hormone. And now moving towards the result, the first figure shows the area distribution of the uh, children that were living at the break-in sites because we selected a site that was quite close to the capital city of the Pakistan. Therefore, it included the people from uh, uh, the wide variety of areas of which around 24% people belong to FATA. The other 10% belong to Lala Musa, Mardan, Peshawar, Charsada, Lahore, Karya, Tharlai, and uh, others. Uh, moving towards the result of the table one, you can see that uh, um, uh, not uh, much difference in the age was present. However, uh, the significant decrease in the BMI was recorded. Similarly, the uh, results of the hematological parameters show a significant decline in the uh, level of uh, hemoglobin, the rise in the WBC that indicates the increase in the infection among the exposed individuals. Similarly, uh, as you can see that the uh, table two, uh, where the heavy metals that were detected in the blood of exposed children as compared to the control ones was measured, their levels were quite high. And these metals included the cadmium, chromium, nickel. And because they are heavy metals, they are definitely um, imposing their negative effects on certain body physiology reactions. So uh, the uh, table three is showing uh, the comparison of um, levels of antioxidants and oxidants. You can see a rise uh, or sorry, a rise in the reactive oxygen species in the exposed group was quite evident, whereas the decline in the level of all the antioxidant was quite evident. If we move towards the result of the hormone ELISA, you can see a significant decrease in the growth hormone was reported. Uh, and similarly, uh, the cortisol levels, which is also the stress hormone. So its level were quite increased in the exposed children. That might be due to the increased level of heavy metal uh, burden in the blood of these individuals. If we look at the results of the comet assay, you can see um, decrease uh, a decrease in the percent DNA in the head region was evident, whereas the decree increase in the percent uh, DNA in the tail region was evident. So uh, moving towards the con conclusion of my study as Brickin uh, emissions, uh, which uh, not only co which consists of large amount of environmental pollutants, including the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and certain heavy metals, they um, ultimately they become part of the circulation and they are moving to each and every organ of our body the, and may effect the physiology of that particular um, body. So the study concluded that the children which are living at the brick sites, they are experiencing a decreased uh, body mass index and altered hematological parameter concentrations, decrease in the antioxidant enzyme concentration, increase in the stress response, altered DNA, uh, altered hormone levels, as well as induced DNA damage. Now, um, we know that when the HPA axis is dis disturbed, it definitely affects the HPG axis. So uh, here the uh, study, um, or you can say it, it can be suggested from the present results that the disturbance of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis may affect the um, hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis and therefore it poses a risk for the normal pubertal development as well as for the reproductive health. Thank you so much for your attention and uh, here I will end my presentation. Thank you. Thanks a lot Mavish David for your wonderful presentation.
No, I'm very glad to call Zunaira Shaheen from Government College University, Faisalabad to present on the effect of chromium chloride, hexahydrate supplementation on gelatinized and non-gelatinized corn-based diets in Katla Katla. Please, Zunaira Shaheen from GCUF. Uh, my name is Zunaira Shaheen and uh, the topic uh, which I represent today is the effect of chromium chloride hexahydrate supplementation on gelatinized and non-gelatinized corn-based diet in Ketla Ketla. First, I introduce uh, about, uh, I, I will discuss about uh, the introduction. Fish plays an important role to meet the nutritional value of the uh, human because of an affordable animal protein source. Pakistan is basically an agricultural country and is endowed with huge natural uh, water resources, both fresh water and brackish and marine water as well as brackish wa water. Intensification of uh, intensification of fish farming is needed to increase productivity, but this requires more formulated feed. Different alternative feed sources originate from plant, animals, or microbes, and varying types used in fish feed. Uh, different carbohydrate sources of dietary ingredients for fish and crustaceans could elicit different physiological and growth responses. Fish have limited uh, fish have limited capacity for dietary carbohydrate utilization. Next, uh, we will discuss about uh, the ketla ketla. Why we choose ketla ketla? Ketla Ketla is a promising species for aquaculture exploitation with its rapid growth and good market potential. It is a valuable herbivorous food fish. Now, discuss about carbs. In carbs, to enhance the digestibility of carbohydrates, some additives are needed to be added. Different forms of chromium compounds have been used as feed additives in fish diet because of their dominant role in carbohydrate, fats, and uh, protein metabolisms. Now, this slide shows uh, the material and method. Uh, prior to proceeding our experiment, uh, Ketla Ketla fingerlings of uniform size were purchased from fish seed hatchery, uh, Satyana Road, Faisalabad. After, mm, after this, uh, acclimatization uh, was done. Uh, for this, fingerlings were acclimatized for 15 days, fed on controlled diet, 4% live weight body weight. After acclimatization, stocking was done. Um, 20 fingerlings were randomly allocated in respective aquarium, each with replicates of water capacity 36 liter uh, and following a completely randomized design. Now, this slide um, shows the percentage compositions of control and experimental diet. In this, T1 is the control, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6 uh, is uh, uh, experimental diets in which uh, T3, T4, T5, uh, uh, the uh, dip two levels of chromium was used, that is 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 with gelatinized and non-gelatinized corn. Uh, the next, uh, uh, next in this slide, study of growth parameters, uh, we will discuss about study of growth parameters. First, during the trial, 10 fingerlings were taken from each eukaryote on fortnight basis to determine the body weight and total body length to observe their growth. Uh, with this formula, condition factor was determined. Uh, this formula uh, was used for specific growth rate. For This was used for weight gain. This was used for weight gain percentage. Now, the next parameter is hematology. Hematology parameters were used to provide information about the health and physiological status of fish, feeding conditions, and water quality in which they live. Hemoglobin was determined by use method of the Dragbin and Austin, mean corpuscular volume, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, and mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration were determined from following equation given by uh, Victor et al. The RBC, WBC values were uh, determined by using a hemocytometer with diluting filters. This formula was used for determination of RBCs. This was used for MCHC. This equation was used for uh, determination of MCHC. Now, the next parameter is enzyme activity catalysis. 
uh, first uh, the total pr uh, protease enzyme total proteolytic activity was measured using the casein hydrolysis method of uh, conitis as modified by walter now the next uh, uh, um, enzyme is amylase amylase activity was determined by the starch hydrolysis method according to somgen nelson now the results uh, after um, at the completion of the experiments results showed that chromium fortified the experimental group d4 with highest growth rate as compared to other treatments uh, while minimum growth phase was observed in d4 experimental group this graph also shows that this the, the, this line shows the growth of t4 uh, that is gelatinized is 0.6 next this shows the effect of rbc's on ketla ketla in this graph uh, this shows that the high uh, values uh, was observed in t4 that was uh, that is also uh, t uh, gelatinized 0.6 this uh, graph shows the alternations in WBCs of Ketla Ketla. Uh, uh, that hemoglobin contact and RBCs were at its peaks in T4, while WBC uh, and HCG percentage was maximum in T1, that is non gelatinized 0 0.0. In case of RBCs and diocese, T4, um, in case uh, T2 showed maximum values of MCV and MCAC while, a, while MCAC uh, was maximum in T4. Now, uh, the effect of on digestive enzymes, the this graph shows the activity of amylase in the liver of Ketla Ketla. And also the highest values was observed in T4 that was that is gelatinized 0 0.6. Uh, and this graph shows the activity of amylase in cuts of ketla ketla and also same the uh, highest values was observed in t4 that is uh, gelatinized uh, 0 0.6 and this graphs the protease activity in the cut the activity of the amylase and protease was higher in all treatment uh, fed with gelatinized corn uh, overall liver showed high amylase activity contrast to intestine and this graph also shows that because t2 t4 and t6 uh, is the treatment in which the gelatinized corn was used and uh, uh, t4 and t6 uh, the chromium level uh, was also used but overall findings but the conclusions overall finding of this work revealed that gelatinized corn along with chromium chloride hexahydrate supplementations on ketla ketla has promising effect uh, uh, has uh, sorry uh, has promising uh, effect on hematology, enzyme activity and growth as compared to gelatinized and uh, non-gelatinized uh, diet. Thank you so much. Thank you so much Zunaira Shaheen for your amazing talk. Now moving towards our next presentation, I would like to call Gohar Akbar from University of Agriculture, Faisalabad to talk about parasitic threat to Habara Buster an endangered bird species in Pakistan. Please go, Akbar. My name is Gaur Akbar, a Phil student, Department of Parastology, study in University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. I'm presenting the topic about parasitic threat to Hobara busted and endangered bird species in Pakistan. First, the start introduction Hobara busted, scientifically called Climolitis, and later the family of Otai DD. These are the least wild bird species. They are migratory birds present all over the world. They are distinguished by behaviorally hereditary and geographically. Hobara busted survive in desert peninsulas. They are omnivores, feed on insects, plant, and water. Male body weight 1.15 to 2.4 kg and female hair 1 to 1.7 kg. Female lay 2 to 4 eggs their seasonal time. Hobara meat also thought for the aphrodisiac. They feed almost early day and mostly of dusk time. Either on the top of head, long and curved, 
which may be quite our leg sports. They are the hubra busted egg laying on ground by limited big nest because the color of eggs match with the sandy ground which helps to hide from the predators. Distribution They are divided into two categories one of the North African hubara which is called Climatolitis andulata other one is the Asian hubara which is called McQueen the difference between these two categories, Asian Hobara busted female larger than not of African Hobara busted. The location show 10 different parts of countries Hobara busted presenting. Next slide, uh, Hobara busted in Pakistan. Asian Hobara present in different provinces on Pakistan including Pakistan, Punjab, Khyber, Patmukha, and Sin. They locally called Telor. Abara Bastard is the provisional bird of Balistan. There are almost 666 bird species present in Pakistan. The estimated of these migrated birds in Pakistan 30 to 40,000 every year for six months. And the population of Abara in Pakistan near to 4746. The map show different areas in Pakistan presenting where the Hubara was did survive. Threats to Hubara was did. Major threats to Hubara was did. They are allowed by Arab volcanoes and predators. So they one, the first one is hunting is more important threat to Hubara busted. Other one is health condition. Threats to Hubara population. Global population of Asian Hubara busted is estimated to lie between 78 to 97,000. They are broadly endangered many diseases, including parasites. There are two categories of parasites, ectoparasite and endoparasite. The simple one collected from the infected birds, which found most common ticks present in, in Hobara busted. There are hyloma, these are hard ticks, scientifically called hyloma marginatums. They are sucking blood. There are sides. Other is Emma Pesilius, Leporis Pesilius, third one Wellingtoni, fourth one Scapularis. These have four life stages, egg, larva, lamb, and adults. There are almost 800 ticks identified in Pakistan, 18 plus recognized. And though parasite, these samples were collected in 10% of formalin from the Hobaraba state from intestine and fecal samples. There are all Spatialia, Ascaria, Relatinia, Hertericia, Odenta, Otitania, Conia, and Lakinia. Septum of pan and septum of endoparasite and endoparasite. There are circling ataxia, nasal discharge, hatrium, diarrhea, conjunctivitis, depression, etc. etc. Control vaccination. Those birds which are in cages can be vaccinated easily, but they are wild birds, so can't be treated easily. They have natural behavior to remove their ectoparasite. First, way, training with the help of beak and stitching with the feet to remove the ectoparasite from body. Next one, water bathing. This, was a, this one is also, also helpful for removing the parasites with blood engaged in bathing and to keep feather in good shape. Third one, nitro specific cleaning and tip parasite removal behavior. And dusting, this one is also helpful to remove the parasites. 
In a red one, the sting is more often observed frequently help to maintain an optimum amount of oil on the epidural treatment. There, the endoparasite and ectoparasite can be treated by ivermectin. Thank you so much, Gaur Akbar, for your informative talk. Now, I would like to call Aksa Shri from Government College, University of Faisalabad, to talk about the effects of carvacrol and methanol supplemented Moringa olifera leaf meal based diets on growth performance and body composition of Arichochromis nylodicus finger leaks. Please, Aksa Shri. Hello everyone, today we are connected at the forum of the uh, Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan. Myself, Aksa Sharif, and today I want to discuss about, remove on the slide, wait a guess please. Yes. So today I want to discuss the effects of carvacrol and menthol supplemented Moringa olifera leaf meal based diets on the growth performance and calcus composition of Orichromis nylodicus finger rings. So to move on or to start the presentation, I will give you a brief introduction of my research. Um, I, I selected the aquaculture field because it is flourishing with 5.8% growth annually. It is the flourishing field, or you can say the leading field because it is providing the people around worldwide the protein issues food at a low cost. And um, uh, the fish meal which is used in the field of the fish that have essential and um, copious amount of the essential amino acid and fatty acids, but it it, it have uh, it limited supply that is the shortcoming of the uh, aquaculture sector and so we researchers we are trying uh, to many uh, to substitute the uh, animal meal with the plant meal so i selected the moringa olifera plant that and uh, that is also known as the miracle tree because it has abundance of the sorts of proteins ascorbic acid carotenoids and so on I selected the Oreochromis nylodicus because it is easy to hear. It can acclimatize to environmental condition and um, it has good taste. So I selected the two phytochemicals. Chemicals. Um, one was the menthol, that is a major compound of the genus mantha species, and the second one was the carvacrol, that's a monitor benign phenol capable of improving the growth performance, digestive, and other activities of fish. So then that was the hypothesis and the objective of my hypothesis was, was that the carbacrol and menthol uh, individual and the, and the blend mix and, the, and uh, the mixture of these two phytochemicals at one ratio one uh, that can improve the growth performance and carcass composition of the fish and the um, objective was to evaluate the effects on the growth performance then on the carcass composition and finally uh, the, to formulate the cost effective feed for the uh, for, for the farmers to feed the Orichromis neuroticus. These are the material method through which I moved on to accomplish my journey. Uh, first of all, uh, fish was acclimatized to the, uh, to the laboratory conditions because when we uh, when we move the animal from the wild condition to the um, uh, from to the laboratory condition, then it, it should be given some time for their uh, for their management with the new environment and for their acclimatization. Then the experimental layout um, was um, selected as the complete, completely randomized design. And ten isolipidic and isoprotic diets were formulated, having uh, that's the diet chart of the fishes. Ten diets were formulated, and the basal diet uh, composition was more or less similar in all the diets except in the level of the carbacrol menthol and then their uh, combination. And three levels were used: two hundred mg per kg, three hundred and four hundred uh, mg per kg of the chemicals. 
So moving back on the slide, then I formulated the field pillar, field pillar of 0.3 micro millimeter millimeter in size uh, through the uh, through the uh, through the extruder. Then the chemical analysis of the sample uh, sample, for example, feed pieces and the body composition that was taken with the help of crude protein was analyzed by the gel dollar protest. Crude fat was analyzed by the Soxley uh, fat extraction through Soxley protest. Uh, gross energy was determined at, at the oxygen warm chlorometer. And uh, then the, uh, all the data was statistically analyzed using two-way ANOVA. So by keeping in mind the time limitation, we'll move on the results. These are the results of the growth performance of the fish. Uh, so um, by by taking a comparative view, uh, you can you can see the readings in the green color. Actually, that's um, uh, I highlighted these readings because these were the best results of my research that were uh, that uh, that were obvious at the um, by giving test diet eight. To the fish having blend of carbacrol and menthol at 200 mg per kg. It means that among all the 10 treatments, uh, the blend of the two chemicals, they have the additive or synergistic effect on the growth performance of the fish and they provided us uh, about 262% weight gain and the best FCR that is also known as 1.5. To five. Actually, the feed conversion ratio that is the best ratio where at which the least chemicals are removed out from the body through the faces. So the second best results that are highlighted in the red color uh, that were obtained by using the pelvic crawl in the feed and uh, at the same level, same uh, supplementation level, you can say the 200 mg per kg and by using this diet, 237% uh, weight gain can be achieved or the fish actually that's a big achievement um, uh, which uh, which will, uh, which can be obtained by using these phytochemicals and uh, actually these both uh, you can say the all the all the data was uh, significantly more or less significantly different from the control uh, actually control have only 158 percent weight gain and you can see the difference between the control and the test types so uh, we have only one minute. Uh, I'll complete my uh, presentation. Carcass composition. Carcass composition uh, again the same. Um, the protein content of the fish body that was 55% protein. Aceous fish was obtained by using the blend of the carbacrol and menthol, and the fat content was 13%. Uh, actually, fish is known as a proteinaceous food, so we want to uh, want to achieve more protein by using the uh, by using uh, by for by formulating the feeds and the second best results were also obtained by using the test diet to having calvacrol at 200 mg per kg that is the 54.70 and that very significantly with the with the control uh, you, you can see at the table that uh, control was 44% control fish have only 44% protein so to conclude the present presentation, I will say that supplementation of carbacrol and menthol played a major role in improving ADC of nutrients, carcass composition, and growth performance of orichromous and lorticus fingerlings at compared to control diet. And then the 200 mg per kg, that's the optimum level of carbacrol and menthol blend per, per, uh, supplementation. And uh, at the last but not the least, it provided us economical and eco-friendly feed for the fish. So that was all from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Akshashri, for your interesting information. Now, I would like to call Dr. Aisha Khizer from University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences to discuss about the optimum dietary calcium requirement of hypophthalmic thighs, molytricus fingerlings. Please, Dr. Aisha Khizer. Assalamu alaikum. Hello and welcome to third international conference on applied zoology 2020 organized by Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan and Kaidiyazam University Islamabad. I am Aisha Khizer from Fisheries and Aquaculture Department, University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Lahore, Pakistan, and my title of presentation is Optimum Dietary Calcium Requirement of Hypophthalmic Thus Monitrix Fingerlings. 
first of all introduction as we know mostly uh, the aquatic animals require inorganic elements or minerals in fishes the minerals are derived from both ways either from water and diet minerals required by fish are calcium magnesium and phosphorus and the calcium requirement in fishes is affected due to uh, different phosphorus level in the diet uh, water chemistry and species difference in addition, calcium play a beneficial role in skeleton system maintenance, growth performance, and physiological processes such as uh, osmoregulation and blood clotting, while the calcium imbalance play a negative role in organism's body. If the calcium deficiency causes anorexia, poor reduced growth and feed efficiency, while the excess of calcium relative to phosphorus has an opposing impact in growth and survival of some species. The main objective of this study is to determine the growth performance and feed efficiency of silver carp, to determine the proximate composition and alkaline phosphatase enzyme activity in silver carp, and to find out the mineral status of different tissues uh, such as bone, scale, serum, and whole body. The research work was carried out in Fish Seed Hatchery Department of Fishes and Aquaculture, Juas Shavri Campus, Patoki. Uh, the main ingredients of purified diet include casein, gelatin, starch, fish oil, mineral mixture which is calcium free and vitamin premix, monosodium phosphate, cellulose, choline chloride and their total percentage is 100. In the in the experimental trial, the basal diet containing calcium lactate as a source of calcium and five different exper uh, experimental diets were formulating containing different calcium levels such as 0, 3, 6, 9 and 12 gram per kg. Uh, in diet formulation, all the dry ingredients were mixed and dough was formed by adding 12 or 15 percent of water. Uh, after dough formation, pellets were formed in meat mincer and uh, after pellets formation, the pellets were dried and stored in self sealing bags. In fish husbandry, fingerlings were acclimatized and after acclimatization, 15 uh, fishes were stocked in each applicate and fed with experimental diet twice a day. The physico-chemical parameters were kept constant during the whole experimental trial and the trial were continued for 90 days. At the end of the trial, growth performance was observed and uh, from final weight data, uh, the maximum final weight was observed in 6 gram per kg diet and absolute weight gain was also maximum in 6 gram per kg diet. While uh, after 6 gram per kg diet, the 9 gram per kg uh, diet showed maximum results in terms of final weight and absolute weight gain. Um, while uh, in proximate composition, uh, the 6 gram per kg diet also showed uh, maximum results in terms of moisture percent and crude protein percent while the um, uh, crude fat percent and ash percent showed decreased results in 6 gram per kg of diet after 6 gram per kg diet uh, the maximum moisture was uh, uh, observed in 9 gram per kg diet and um, the fat and ash curse, uh, percent was uh, decreased in, uh, in this diet. In alkaline phosphatase enzyme activity, it was observed that when we increase the calcium levels in the diet, increase the levels of calcium, uh, the ALP activity also increases um, in the uh, serum. The mineral from uh, analysis from different body tissues uh, in whole body sample, the calcium and phosphorus concentration was maximum in 9 gram per kg diet. The magnesium and zinc concentration was uh, minimum in this diet. The calcium and phosphorus ratio was maximum in 3 gram per kg of diet. While in from scale samples, the calcium and phosphorus concentration was maximum in 12 gram per kg diet and uh, magnesium and zinc concentration was minimum at this level. Uh, the calcium and phosphorus level was maximum uh, from scale samples in um, uh, 9 gram per kg of diet while from the say, bone samples 
the uh, calcium concentration was maximum in 9 gram per kg diet and uh, phosphorus concentration was maximum in 12 gram per kg of diet while magnesium and zinc concentration was minimum in 6 gram per kg of diet broken line regression was applied uh, on weight gain percent data to find out the optimum calcium requirement of silver cup. After broken line regression analysis, the optimum requir calcium requirement uh, was uh, observed uh, 8.11 gram per kg. In conclusion, the growth performance, ALP, and mineralization in different body tissues enhanced when calcium was added in the diet of silver carp. Up to a certain range, the addition of calcium in the diet showed decline results. So the optimum uh, requirement of calcium in diet for silver carp ranges up to 8.11 gram per kg. Above this level, the hypothalamic thesmolytics showed decline results. Um, so it was suggested or it is helpful in formulating the nutrition balanced feed benefit and it is also beneficial for farmers which culture silver carp in intensive semi-intensive and polyculture systems uh, because silver carp uh, um, is a phytoplanktivorous species and most cultivated in uh, the polyculture systems hope that you understand well and thank you for your attention thank you so much dr Aisha Khizar for delivering such an interesting information to our audience. Now, I would like to call Muhammad Mudassar Shahzad from University of Education to discuss about the effectiveness of probiotic supplemented linseed meal based diet on overall performance of labor ohita. Please, Muhammad Mudassar Shahzad. Dear viewers, I am very thankful to Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan and Kaidazam University Islamabad for hosting the third international conference on Applied Zoology 2020. Dear audience, I am Dr. Muhammad Udassar Shahzad from Department of Zoology, University of Education, Lahore. Today, we will discuss about the effectiveness of probiotics supplemented linseed meal based diets on overall performance of labia roheta fingerlings. First of all, we are going to discuss about the goals of aquaculture. The first goal of aquaculture is to fulfill the demands of increasing human population for their feeding. The next one is increase the production of fish for extending human population. The third one, the third is increase the quality of fish that will be obtained from the aquaculture industry. They are the background of problem that we have studied. There is a high cost of fish meal due to high cost and their unavailable supply. We are going to search for some alternatives. Use of alternative protein sources are very beneficial for fish health and their growth. One of the basic alternative that we used in our study is linseed meal that is commonly called as flaxseed in Pakistan. That is the common alternative protein source having a very low cost as compared to fish meal and other protein sources. It is very economical and easily available protein source in Pakistan. The linseed having high amount of protein having best amino acids that are necessary for fish having best fatty acid fatty acid profile and important minerals that are required for fish health but there is a problem in the use of these plant meals because the plant meal cannot be easily digested or absorbed in the fish body without the use of probiotics in this study we use the probiotics that are basically living in digested bacteria and yeast, providing the health benefits to enhancing the host microbial intestinal suitability. Because of these supplement, because of supplementation of these probiotics, we are able to get a healthy fish, and the fish can easily grow 
by the presence of these probiotics. At the end, we can say that the probiotics are very essential for proper health of fish. Now, we are going to discuss about the results. Number one, we are going to discuss about the growth parameters of Rahu. Here again, you can observe, here in this slide, you can easily observe that, you can easily observe that the best survival and the best weight gain, weight gain percentage, best FCR and standard growth rate were high in fish that were fed on the diet containing 2 gram per kg level based diet. Following the fish, or fish fed on 3 gram per kg supplemented, uh, probiotic supplemented linseed meal based diet. On the other hand, if we talk about the lowest weight gain, weight gain percentage, uh, standard growth rate and survival, you can easily observe that the control diet having 0 gram per kg probiotic supplemented diet having the lowest FCR and uh, sorry having the lowest standard growth rate and other parameters. If we talk about the nutrient digestibility in this graph you can easily observe that the crude fat digestibility and crude uh, and crude protein digestibility were highest in the fish fed on 2 gram per kg level based diet following the 3 gram per kg level based diet. But if we talk about the grass energy, maximum grass energy absorption was found in the fish that were fed on two, uh, 3 gram per kg level based diet following the fish fed on 2 gram per kg level based diet. Here again you can observe that the lowest uh, for lowest nutrient digestibility was observed in the fish that were fed on control and 5 gram per kg level based diet. Now we are going to discuss about the mineral absorption. Here again you can observe that the highest, uh, highest uh, crude, uh, highest phosphorus, highest potassium and sodium digestibility was observed in the fish that were fed on 2 gram per kg level based diet following the 3 gram per kg level based diet. On the other hand, if we talk about the calcium and aluminium, these both minerals were highly absorbed in the fish that were fed on 3 gram per kg level based diet following the 2 gram per kg level based diet. From these results, we can conclude that the probiotic supplementation in fish feed is essential for proper health and their digestion in fish body. Because the presence of these probiotics, fish can easily digest their food and, and can obtain the best enzymes from these probiotics that can help for, for their proper digestion and their proper absorption of the nutrients and minerals into the fish body. So thank you for your attention, please. I'm very thankful to you, to all of you for your attention. And again, very thankful to Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan and Kailazam University. Thank you. Thank you so much, Muhammad Mudassir Shahzad for your amazing presentation. Now I would like to call M. Lagari from Sindh University, Jamshoro to deliver presentation on growth evolution of Acanthophragus latus dandia found in Indus River, Sindh, Pakistan. Please, M. Lagari. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Honorable President and Secretary of Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan, respected Chairman of the session, dear colleagues and participants, Assalamu alaikum, good morning. I am Dr. Mohammed Yunus Lagari, Associate Professor in the Department of Freshwater Biology and Fisheries, University of Sin, Pakistan. First of all, I am thankful to organizers of third international conference on applied zoology 2020 who provided me opportunity as a speaker during this virtual conference. Today, my topic is the growth evolution of Echinetha figurus latus dandia found in Indus River. 
Pakistan. These are the contents, uh, introduction, objective, material methods, uh, and the results, then conclusion. First of all, I want to introduce the fish that I have selected for the present study uh, is called as, uh, locally called as the yellow fancy cream, even gray cream or the Jap Japanese cream, locally said as the Tandia. Generally, this fish is live in the depth of the sea and about 50 meters and it is have a schooling habit. They often feed on the tidal flats. Generally, these uh, are the carnivorous fishes and especially feed on the carnivorous worms and carcinogens as well as the mollusks. Generally, uh, yellowfin sea bream is the natural inhabitant of the creeks. creeks but it also live in the estuarine water and also migrates towards the uh, river. So that's why uh, uh, we have collected this uh, uh, fish uh, because they have a great traits because of the drainage wastage of uh, the rivers industries, especially in the coastal region. That's why present study was selected, a study of the growth at the uh, fish in the Indus River. So the objective was the project, uh, to identify the growth condition of uh, Acanthopagoras latest from the Indus Rivers. The, the material methods includes the study site, sample collection, preservation, mirroring of parameters, and the data analysis. This is the site selection layer look. We collected from the Tata site. It is a little bit uh, up a stream toward from the estuarine water body. It migrates up, upwards. So this is the site selection. We collected uh, the fish for, from the, by the help of the fishermen and all the samples are collected and kept in the freezer uh, in the uh, uh, ice box and then brought to the Department of Freshwater Biology and Fisheries for the further analysis. This is the, uh, my research team that during this uh, project with the total length was mirrored in the centimeter weight mirror in the gram, which was used for the analysis. The analysis was uh, uh, after this to estimate the growth, the Likren method, Likren followed by the Likren uh, that he suggested the uh, formula by this is the formula. Uh, when we calculated the length weight relation, the length weight relationship of fish shows the good growth because the regression value is the 0 0.939. This 0 0.39 suggests the growth is the better and good growth of this fish whenever it migrates up the stream. So uh, finally, whenever we calculate, uh, collected about uh, 300 fish species from the river and out of them, this average was 15.667 centimeter and the weight was as 75.64 grams. When we calculated finally, the according to the formula suggested the leak rate that C is uh, the constant values that uh, suggest 3.8, that 3.38 is not an ideal growth, but there is uh, the environmental factors or other factors that might be disturbed. That's why the value is very low. While N is the exponent here, this exponent value, it suggests the growth of the fish either is the isometric or the allometric while this is this shows the 2.59 is no doubt this knows 100 percent the isometric growth but is affected uh, definitely whenever the habitat difference is uh, very different but however it is the suitable and have a good range that is uh, 2.5 is in ideal and might be cultured in the fresh water uh, even so, the, uh, there is the uh, condition factor also collected also by the Paltons 97 while the Likren 1.937 also both the values suggest that they uh, have an environmental impact on this the growth of the fish. So, based on this study, we suggest and we can uh, culture this species in the uh, fresh water source for the uh, uh, studies also needed to confirm and make a trial for further study to keep such a precious species in the culture system. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Amlagari, for sharing your interesting talk to our audience. Now, I would like to call our second last speaker of this session, Nareen Nayab from KUS, to discuss about the effects of atazine on survival, behavior, and biochemical aspects of silver carp, hypophthalmic thighs, molytics. Please, Nareen Nayab. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. My name is Nareen Nayab, Department of Zoology, Kohat University of Science and Technology, Kohat. The title of my presentation is Effect of Itrazine on Survival, Behavior and Biochemical Aspect of Silver Carp, that is Hypothelmethes molytrix. I start from introduction followed by objectives, material and methods and then the results. So itrazine is one of the most commonly used herbicide used to control annual grasses and broad leaved weeds such as maize, wheat, rice and sugarcane etc. Itrazine run off into water bodies posing threats to aquatic population including fishes. Itrazine is highly toxic and carcinogenic in nature. Itrazine is not degraded by microbial or hydrolytic process. Objectives The first objective of my presentation is to analyze the acute toxicity of itrazine on survival, behavioral, and morphological aspect of silver carp. The second objective is to evaluate the biochemical response of itrazine on total protein content, LPO level, and the activities of antioxidant enzymes is marker in liver, brain, gills, and muscle tissue of silver carp. <coughs> Material and methods. This is the flow diagram which I have followed during my research work. First, I collect silver carp from Thunder Dam cohort and acclimatized it one week, one week before the start of experiment. It resin dilution was made with 80% acetone. Acute toxicity analysis. For acute toxicity analysis, 25 fishes were taken. One group was made as control group and the four group were made as treated group, which are treated with different doses of etrazine. LC50 for 96 hours was determined. The behavior and morphology of fish were examined from both the control and treated groups. Biochemical analysis include total protein contents, LPO level, and the activities of antioxidant enzymes. Results. Total protein estimation in liver and gills. These graph shows the total protein content in liver and gills. In the present study, in treated groups, the total protein content is reduced as compared to control group in liver and in gills from 24 to 96 hours. Total protein estimation in brain and muscle. These graphs show the total protein content in brain and in muscle. With respect to control group, the total protein content in treated group is reduced. In brain and in muscle, 
when the fish were exposed to different concentration of atrazine for a different time period. This may be the reason because to cope with environmental condition, the protein was converted into glucose by the process of glucogenesis. Now lipid per oxidation level in liver and gills. This graph shows the LPO level in liver and gills. In the present study, the LPO level in treated groups was increased as compared to control group in liver and also in gills from 24 to 96 hours. Now, lipid per oxidation level in brain and muscle. This graph shows the LPO level in brain and in muscle. Here, an increase was observed in treated groups as compared to control group. In muscle, LPO level was increased in treated groups uh, with respect to control groups for different time period. From this study, I concluded that atrazine is toxic to silver carp because it produces oxidative stress in silver carp. Therefore, it should be used in a permissible limit. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Nareen Nayab, for such an amazing talk. Now, I would like to call the last speaker of this session, Umar Liakat from University of Agriculture, Faisalabad, to discuss about the population dynamics of pests and their natural animals in sugarcane crop. Please, Umar Liakat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Umar Liakat, studying amphibian zoology from Department of Zoology, Wildlife and Fisheries in University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. Today I am going to present population dynamics of pests and their natural enemies in sugarcane crop. Here is some content include introduction, methodology, results, Conclusions, references. Introduction. We know that sugarcane is the major and cash crop of Pakistan. Uh, it provides many sugarcane products. Pakistan is at the fifth position in the world for the production of sugarcane and at the eighth position for the consumption of sugarcane and sugarcane products. Sugarcane production in Pakistan is lower as compared to the last years uh, as the report of gain. Uh, due to increasing demand of sugarcane in Pakistan, there is need to examine the factors and the phenomena which cause yield loss. Uh, many factors affecting the sugarcane yield loss, but, uh, but in these factors, pests are the most important. 265 species of pests affecting the sugarcane and uh, which are related to the 64 families and 7 order. These pests are self-feeders, leaf-eating, Phytofeeders and stem borders. The agro ecosystem are dynamics in nature. We know that, and uh, it has many important in the ecosystem. So, keeping the importance of past dynamics phenomena in nature and uh, their relationship with the natural enemies, a uh, study uh, was conducted to find out the population dynamics of past and their natural enemies in sugarcane crop. With the objective include population trend of biological agent to check the population fluctuation of pests in sugarcane ecosystem and approach to check how much biological control are present. My methodology and uh, methodology I done my study in entomological field, Yangwala Entomology Department of Entomology University of Agriculture, Faisalabad, where all the agronomic practices are done. Here is my field picture where I done my study and uh, I use RCVD layout for making blocks and sub blocks. 
and divides area into blocks and sub blocks the random sampling method was used for the observation of population each sampling size was considered as the replica and the area was divided into five blocks the distance between each blocks will be 2 cm here is the map of my uh, study area and the field which showed at five uh, different uh, uh, five division of rcbd layout uh, and let's start with the result population dynamics of pest uh, i start with the population dynamics of pest first and then with the natural enemies the population of prela shows uh, start start showing during the uh, end of the uh, april and reach to the peak toward the mid of the october similarly the borers three types of borer mean study root borers toe borers and stem borers and uh, these borers show population trend only during the end of the july toward the start of uh, end of the august uh, more, these borders are not uh, much present in the uh, spf variety uh, 247 uh, population dynamics of acridid eyes and the grasshopper and the short horn over are mainly studied grasshopper show greater fluctuation than that of the uh, short horn hopper population dynamics of beet worm uh it showed at high growth high peak uh, uh, population fluctuation during the uh, mid of the uh, august to the third week of september and then declined toward the october uh, mid of the uh, october uh, now discuss about the population dynamics of natural enemies and uh, first i am going to discuss about lady bird beetle 127 specimens were recorded and uh, during the study population minimum during the start of the july and uh, growth at mid of the october and then to, uh, toward the end of the uh, study period green uh, lesson show little fluctuation and uh, it from the gust to the october population dynamics of every parrot which are every every parrot which are the pest of the pare natural enemy of the parella and it show growth during the mid of the uh, august to september and similarly parasitoid species i study barconid webs which show the population growth uh, and show the peak value at the end of the uh, at the mid of the uh, uh, september conclusions of my study include uh, the past the parella population uh, this graph showed that the parella population is higher than their natural enemies and this graph also show that the acridid eye and the grass of a short on over population uh, less than that of the parasitic synchrony between the natural enemies and pest to control the uh, pest in a sugarcane field uh, mainly the pest population is lower the results showed that greater dynamics present pest population of pest and their natural enemies sugarcane crop during the e trial period from 3rd week to july Uh, overall the population of pest higher than the natural enemies the study showed that the population of both pest and natural enemies are on the top during the gust and the natural enemy population declined toward the end of the october overall two major peaks of pest were recorded first during the start of experiment during third week of the july and during the end of the third week of the august and the second october uh, this study helped the farmer in many ways and um, if we know the population dynamics of pest uh, we can easily manage the pest it tell about the emergence of pest and natural and uh, of pest and natural enemy and the time of its peak and uh, it also helps to in time management and spraying of insecticide and pesticide if natural control is not present uh, here is references of some uh, references of, of some my study uh, and uh, thank you for your attention thank you mulya kid for a wonderful talk the five session of today conference has ended i would like to say thank you to all the speakers for delivering such an informative talk to our audience